this first situation um, when I heard the word assembler as the most elementary programming language. We, we were three students and one prof in, the, in, in, in a very small seminar on historical linguistics and the great Johannes Lohmann told us three people the history of the Indo-European languages from the time of the ancient Greeks and Indians up to English, and modern English, and he showed the, that all the flexibility and richness of conjugation and declination typical of ancient Indo-European languages has been lost in the long in three thousand years of history and, in, and modern English would be the end point of this development or, or rather decline and then Lohmann added that even the poorness of English can be optimized or maximized and then he said look at assembler code and I didn't understand at the time what he meant and then he said uh, in English you can say I write, I wrote, I've written in assembler code I can only say write as a command there's no, dec there's no conjugation of, the, of this verb and and assembler code consists only of commands. No, not there's no one object thing, and there's no there are no cases, uh, grammatical cases. I mean, it's just the end form, the final form of Indo-European script. And this was great and inspired me to learn assembler. Assembler is nice, it's of course the fastest way, uh, it's of course the best way to write the fastest code. That's why my Mandelbrot program is written in Intel Assembler and has a big disadvantage to, to be unable to run on, on, on older Macintoshes because in like the Mac, the, the, the Apple machines, the form of Apple machines, there are no Intel chips. This situation is drastic and changed. Huh. What should I have? Uh, uh, yeah, I have to go on. I'm sorry. Mm. And I go, I'll go on equally in history as in logic and in logic, in time and in structure. Your assembler code you write for your CPU, your arithmetical logical unit that which can only deal with whole numbers and alphabetical letters by translating letters into numbers. This precisely is the ASCII code. Um, and very soon you miss something very badly. You can't write, uh, you can't stimulate nature, mother nature, mother earth, with whole numbers. Also the introduction of real numbers in the late 16th century, we Europeans, unlike the Greeks, uh, think in real numbers when describing colors or trajectories or 
uh, light quantities or electrical quantities and so on and so on and so on. And, and that's why uh, Intel and other companies produced and myself and others bought not only processors but only numerical coprocessors hopefully I hope you understand immediately this term numerical coprocessor first it was a single chip separated from the CPU it was the FPU the floating point unit um, I don't go into this topic of floating point arithmetic arithmetic and from the uh, from Intel 486 on they were integrated on one chip and now uh, you, you don't see them anymore as, this, as distinct entities and other numerical coprocessors and vector processors uh, were added and it would be a whole a whole semester to tell all this stuff. It's not necessary. I, it, I think we leave it with the dramatic statement that coprocessors, numerical coprocessors, by necessity cannot be mathematically equally correct as processors of whole numbers. This is a, a sad fact and explains partly why nuclear power plants uh, were very hesitating in introducing digital uh, logic. They mistrusted the coprocessor multiplications and more they, and with even better reasons they distrusted the coprocessors co division results which were very faulty at the time and had and could have ruined millions of people and had killed millions of people you see the point of little hardware errors and bugs relation in, in relation to to millions deaths and I Can I leave it with this statement without going into more details? <laughs> there would have been ways to avoid or to minimize this risk and to the deep regret of a very close friend of mine, this step was, was published only in papers but not on silicon up to now. Too, too expensive for the army. Now I come to a more familiar and structural topic. And this topic is the architecture of a, of a usual mainboard inside your system, be it a laptop or a desktop or even a mobile telephone. I give a logical representation, which I didn't prepare, so I have to pay some attention to myself.
this diagram is intended to show you, and it's not invented by myself, it's classical simplification uh, inside the industry and the teaching in computer science. The interrelation between processing and storing data, in other words, the interrelation between the CPU central processing unit and the random access memory RAM. Mm -hmm. Both are binary devices uh, onto the lowest thinkable level of one single flip-flop. Um, but this is a, let's say, a satellite view of all these little flip-flops. Um, and so the, the, the in infrastructure shows up only by the astro astronomical overview. In reality, this thing on my main board, let's say, will have this approximately this size because there's ma there are many RAM chips and a single CPU. And the crucial point, at least in my mind, is that uh, that in, 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 in fact, it's not a duality made up of uh, CPU and RAM. In fact, it's a trinity, an unholy trinity, uh, made up of processor, memory, and bus or better, made up of one uh, CPU, as many as possible RAM chips, and as broad as possible bus lines. The bus lines are not rep represented by chips, but by miniaturized electric connections or which can be switched on and switched off. Very important. Uh, but we, are, we have only six, 17 minutes. And from this, and now I show it. This would be uh, uh, from a hardware viewpoint, all these buses look equal and are, in, and are implemented equally. From a logical point, they are distinct. This would be the control bus transmitting commands. This would be an, the, the or many address bus the the control bus is unidirectional. It goes like a diode from the CPU to the RAM chips and never the other way around. The address chip is bidirectional. It can pass, oh sorry, it is also one-dimensional because it can pass addresses, RAM addresses, to the RAM chips. And only the data bus here is bidirectional. The CPU can write data into the RAM and the RAM and, and it can read data inside the RAM. In other words, the RAM can write data into the CPU. In other words, the system is a Turing machine. The system that can read and write itself. <coughs> uh, 
and from this trinity, this threefold structure, I took the I took the structure and the title of my book, Gramophone Film Typewriter, which book wanted to replace the Aristotelian duality of matter and form by a media, media theoretical a trinity of processing, addressing, transmitting, and storing data, addresses, and, and commands on every fractal level that you like to think of. Uh, I wanted to replace uh, that, in a sense, many years ago, <laughs> 1986. Uh, the static Aristotelian definition of a thing by, form and, by, the, by the polarity of form and matter, uh, by the media technical media technical flow of data commands and addresses around and around and in between, in between. And I took all these concepts from hardware, from ex existing hardware devices and but, but a little bit I generalized them. From, in my reading of things and I still stick to it. Processing means uh, executing operations or commands, transmitting the bus, uh, is by addresses in favor of data. You need addresses to address data as you need house numbers to address a house in a street. So you need addresses as not so important information uh, and, to, and together with data as a, very, as a really relevant information. Data can be numeric, can be logic, can be can be arithmetic, but in a in a Van Neumann architecture, and that is important. Uh, <coughs> this uh, differ these differences made from a point of content uh, are irrelevant in a really existing RAM. Uh, there is made no distinction between uh, control data, address data, and data data, if I may say so. Mm. And in other systems, as in the Harvard architecture, there, the bus makes a difference between uh, transmitting commands and transmitting uh, data. This architecture is faster than Neumann's one, but it, it has seldom been realized. It's more expensive. And in a sense, the Neumann architecture has the advantage to be brutal, more brutal, more, more simplistic. Making, uh, it, it avoids to make unnecessary distinctions. And I think this is compatible uh, against the first view with Gregory Bateson's is the most 
significant, important difference to be made. <coughs> Ten minutes left. I could stop here and allow you questions. Or it was a hard stop. Not so fine as in the early afternoon. Also romantic. Should I proceed this ten minutes? Give you a form. Um, where do you see the future of computing with the development of superconductors? And how do you see it? The future? Mm -hmm. I understood. Stood you to say the future? Oh yeah. How do you understand uh, computers changing in terms of you know new technologies like superconductors, cesium-based atomic clocks, that kind of stuff? Please postpone this question okay. to tomorrow. Um, then what about, um, I mean, in your book you talk about... I, 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 I just, uh, and please, I, I'm, I, usually I'm not so strict as uh, at, at this very hour, late hour, but uh, please restrict yourselves to understanding questions. I, I, would, I want to know whether I, 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 I've, I've, I've I've, I've got through my message or not, and don't ask me uh, external questions. Please. I gather that you would like to see or have shown the transition between duality to Trinitarian relationships. Not just mm -hmm. today, you've been doing that. I don't know if you could go a little further into that. Um, mm -hmm. the, tr the concept of mm -hmm. three, to me, uh, as being a person, mm -hmm. is in the base of, of all of this, and I would like to see, you know. My honest answer would be un I'm unable, I'm unable to deep, deep, deeper to put, I, I, I have to reflect after, after the lectures end. It's a good question, it's a too good question for me to answer immediately on the spot. But maybe if you can help us go a little deeper into the three. Processing, I think yeah. we all understand. And transmitting more or less because that's what we're used to. Yeah. Where does the whole uh, significance of addressing, not just in the physical architectural model, but mm -hmm. there's a concept behind that that I feel that you could maybe help yeah. us yeah. grasp. Yeah. But Please can I do. In this artificial reality con called computer science, uh, randomness is not allowed in a sense, or it's only fake. Uh, and things have to be in order. Uh, so, as in, as in, as in, Georg Kantor's set theory. Uh, every number has two faces. It is at the same time an ordinal number and a cardinal number, an ordinal number because it is the nth, nth number and a, and the cardinality. The cardinality would, would be its data. Eight gives gives us eight apples and seven gives us only seven. But and, and the and the Ordinate, or, and, the, and the ordinate sequence doesn't count for, for, for this kind of data. Mm. This is a very silly an answer and I should go on and say that mm, computers are not ordered, ordered very strictly, but very hierarchical in their internal architecture. <laughs> their transmitting is, and bus is also important, because at the heart of the system, there cannot be more than one uh, CPU. This is, a, this is a very bad and melancholic fact, and uh, your question went beyond this issue and I'm, I'm just, but for the actual moment I'm, I would be content if you uh, 
restricted yourself as I do to what to one motherboard this one hierarchical centrum of the of the type of the Pentagon or what what else you would, will take, and transmitting would be uh, as hum, somehow military uh, uh, instruction or command channel from highest level to lower level to deepest levels and. And another important point would be that, and, and a point unrela not related to military order, uh, would be that data are unable to process themselves. This melancholic fact might be explained by Plato's theory of writing, writing in the Phaedrus. He is against writing, against brief volumes, books, uh, with the simple argument, books ca can't defend their argument. Only oral teachers like so as such as Socrates can do this. Books are simple, memory helps, uh, as Platon has it, hypo and data and rom, roms, read-only memories, but even uh, but even uh, read-write memories, uh, RAMs can't pro uh, can't proceed and transmit their data. Data are somehow passive from by their very definition. And this passivity uh, has to be overcome in by two measures or two steps. Uh, a channel, a bus, like in Shannon's theory of information, and a, and a central processing unit, which is missing in Shannon's view, early view of things. The Shannon's system can encode and decode every given input, in so far it processes this input twice at the transmitting, at the at, at, at start and end, mm. but it produces new, new results and computers are constructed to solve these are two unsolved problems and not just to uh, make intercommunication under secrecy conditions possible. And so uh, the Jewish, German, Brazilian uh, media philosopher Wilhelm Flusser, he's dead and I knew him quite well. <laughs> we are friends in a sense. <coughs> he used to say that the computers were an engineer's desideratum since uh, the early years of the 20th century. Uh, the, the, statistics, the, stat, sorry, the statics of bridges and iron construction and skyscrapers became more and more complicated and the, the Architects uh, responsible for the stati static stability of the construction were desperate, were desperate, desperate in, in need of uh, a, a, a machine that could uh, save their, their computers in the sense of uh, of uh, of low low human personnel uh, to resolve all these uh, quite difficult di di quite difficult differential equations for people's and users security reasons. And I think Lusser was right. <coughs> but but Thank you.
question is are not powerful, uh, architects are not powerful enough to, to get their will. High commands of armies are more powerful and have got their will. This is a very prosaic uh, final state, statement that after so much pathos of, on my side at the end of some course of, of two days. I'm tired and would prefer to retire. <laughs> yeah.